Once again, welcome to my YouTube channel that is Professor LPT Food Technology. Myself, Dr. P. K. Mandal, Professor in Department of Livestock Products Technology. Today's topic is condensed milk. Sometimes there are two kinds that is condensed milk and evaporated milk. So I am going to discuss about their brief introduction, objective, procedure, then about the equipments required and then their composition or nutritive value, some specifications and standards, BIA specifications and little bit different kind of machineries and equipments involved in this process. As I said, I am going to talk about condensed milk which can be two different variety. One is for full cream milk, another is for skim milk. So in case of full cream milk, we can have unsweetened or sweetened. And again in case of skim milk, we can have unsweetened and sweetened. So when it is sweetened condensed milk or sweetened skim, condensed skim milk, it is truly called as condensed milk. Whereas when it is unsweetened, it is called as evaporated milk because it undergoes through sterilization process since there is no sugar. Whereas in case of sweetened condensed milk, sugar itself plays an important role as preservative. So we will see different aspects like composition, unitive value and physicochemical properties also at a later time. Here let us see the definition. The condensed milks are the products obtained by evaporating part of the water of whole milk or fully or partially skimmed milk with or without addition of sugar. As I mentioned earlier, it could be full cream milk or skimmed milk. It could be with sugar or without sugar. The ratio of concentration of milk solids is about 1 is to 2.5 for full cream milk that is 2.5 liter of milk will be reduced to 1 liter or it can be 1 is to 3 for sweetened condensed skim milk that is in case of skim milk the 3 liter will be reduced to 1 liter as I said earlier the condensed milk can be full cream sweetened condensed milk or it is called evaporated milk when it is full cream unsweetened condensed milk Similarly, in case of skim milk also, there is sweetened condensed milk and there is unsweetened condensed skim milk which is actually to be called as evaporated milk. Here let us see the objective and principle. The objective is to enhance the shelf life, to decrease the volume. That is sometime we may have large amount of excess milk which is very difficult to store. So by making condensed milk we can reduce the volume and also increase the shelf life and it will have better suitability for some kind of products to prepare. The principle here is evaporating part of water under vacuum. So some kind of special evaporator is used for removing the water very fast which we are going to discuss in details later. And enhancing self life it is by addition of sugar. A large amount of sugar is added which plays an important role for preservation and also heat treatment. In case of sugar added heat treatment is less but when sugar is not added heat treatment is very severe and it is like sterilization. So another basic thing is here saving in cost of packaging and storage and transport since the volume is reduced by two or three times so the packaging storage and transport becomes convenient in the right side i can see the we can see the flow chart of course we are going to see it in more details later the basic steps are reception testing standardization preheating and pasteurization then partial chilling and then it goes for actual evaporation and finally homogenization and cooling. So we will see it later again. Once again, let us see the basic principle in making of condensed milk. The basic principle in the production of condensed and evaporated milks is that high quality milk is filtered or clarified, then standardized, preheated and pasteurized, then condensed or evaporated to the desired level. 
the concentrated products is preserved by the addition of sugar for condensed milk and by heat sterilization for evaporated milk. So this is the basic principle for making the condensed milk products. Principles of evaporation. Here basically two things are required. One, one is necessary heat must be supplied. Another is removal of vapor. So when, when heat is supplied, the vapor will come out from the milk as there is mostly water and then that vapor should be removed. So there are three principal elements in evaporator. One is heat transfer, sometimes called as calendria. Another is vapor fluid separation. That is to separate the vapor from the liquid and that is done by bodies. And the third thing is energy utilization. So here the vapor is used as the heating medium. So we must use this steam in a most economical way to reduce the cost of production or proper economic utilization of energy. Here we will see types of evaporator. There are different types of evaporating machine for preparing the condensed milk. The first one is continuous flow. So here the milk flows from one side and the final product comes out after evaporation from the other end. So it could be like concentric tubes, which you have seen in case of pasteurization. So the medium will be outside and the milk will be inside or it can be either way. Then there is vacuum pan, which is most common and I will be telling more details about it later. Then horizontal tubes, that is not so common. Then there is vertical tube, then there is a falling film machine, which is a um, little more details of all these three I am going to show at the end of this lecture. Then there is plate evaporator. So this is like plate heat exchanger, what you have seen in case of HTST pasteurization. So there are thin steel plates and it is dividing the flow of the liquid medium or steam and the milk in either side. And there is multi-effect type where there are several stages, first stage, second stage and third stage of evaporation takes more details we will see later. Here is parts of a evaporator, especially the vacuum evaporator which is most commonly used for evaporation. The first one is the evaporator body, then heating surface, then condenser and trap and then the vacuum pump. Little bit of this I am going to show more details at the last part of this lecture. In the diagram you can see there is a place for product entry that is the liquid milk and at the bottom you can see the output of the concentrated milk after evaporation. Inside this body the milk get evaporated and the steam goes up and that vapor is condensed and taken out by a condenser and the trap. We will see little more at the last part. Here we will see the advantages of vacuum pan. The first thing is economy of operation. That is the pan works with the minimum energy utilization. As I said earlier, the steam is the main source or medium for heating and evaporation. So it is done very fast. The evaporation is very fast and efficient. So it is economic. The operation is fast. And thirdly, the protection of milk against heat damage. So this evaporation, if it is done slow, then the milk is exposed to high temperature for a long time that causes heat damage. Thus, the finished product remains free from any cooked flavor and can be readily reconstituted into original milk. Since the exposure to high temperature is very less, so there will be no cooked flavor. When the milk is exposed to high temperature for a longer time, then there is a cooking effect and production of certain components like sulphide drill and that gives cooked flavor. So that can be avoided in this case. Here is steam requirement in different kind of evaporators. As I said, the quantity of steam required is very important for economics. So here we will see a comparison between type of evaporator and the steam required 
to evaporate 1 kg of water from milk. The first one single effect that needs 1.2 kg of steam to remove 1 kg of water. The double effect needs 0.6 kg. The triple effect needs 0.4 kg and the quadruple effect needs 0.3 kg of steam for removing 1 kg of water from milk. So this gives an idea about the efficiency of different kind of evaporator. Here is the standard for unsweetened condensed milk. As I said earlier, in that case, it can be called evaporated milk. It can be either from full cream or from skim milk. So product obtained from cow or buffalo milk or skim milk or a combination thereof or from standardized milk by partial removal of water. That's the definition for unsweetened condensed milk and the requirements in case of unsweetened condensed milk that is full cream milk the milk fat should be minimum 8% and milk solid should be minimum 26% in case of unsweetened condensed skim milk the milk fat will be maximum 0.5% and milk solids will be minimum 20% so this is the standard for unsweetened condensed milk or evaporated so here is the definition and standards for sweetened condensed milk or skim milk as per FSSAI. The product obtained from cow or buffalo milk or skim milk or a combination thereof or from standardized milk by partial removal of water and after addition of cane sugar. So in case of sweetened condensed milk, the minimum requirement of fat is 9%. The milk solids 31% and cane sugar 40%. In case of sweetened condensed skim milk, the milk fat maximum 0.5, milk solids 26% and cane sugar 40%. So this gives the details about the sweetened condensed milk or skim milk. Here is the brief process with flow chart for preparation of condensed milk. You can see in the right side that is receiving milk followed by filtration and clarification, then standardization, then preheating and pasteurization. After that addition of sugar, then condensing at a ratio of 2 is 2.5 is to 1, then homogenization, then cooling and crystallization, then packaging and storage. In the left side block diagram also same thing is presented for easy and better understanding of this process for making condensed milk. Here is the flow chart for preparation of evaporated milk that is unsweetened condensed milk. We can see the right side flow chart receiving of milk then filtration by clarification then standardization then preheating and pasteurization at 115 to 118 degrees Celsius for no hold, then actual evaporation at the ratio of 1 is to 2.5 or sometime we are telling 2.5 is to 1, then homogenization by double stage, 2000 psi first stage and 500 psi second stage at 50 to 55 degrees Celsius, then cooling, then sterilization test and packaging then actual sterilization. So here the sterilization is done under the packaging condition, a kind of canning we can say or nowadays we can say retard processing. After that cooling, then shaking and storage. So this is the brief flow chart for preparation of evaporated milk. Some of the details we are going to see later. So now we will see the details of processing for condensed milk or evaporated milk. The first step as I said earlier is the receiving of milk in which quality of incoming raw milk is most important. The milk should be clean, sweet, free from off flavors and odors and reasonably free from extraneous material. Temperature of raw milk should be 10 degrees Celsius or below and the contamination by antibiotics pesticides and other chemical residues and metals is highly undesirable. So these are some of the important points pertaining to receiving of milk, the first step. 
so here is platform tests as you know before receiving the milk we need to do some test to see the quality of the milk most important is alcohol test it detects the tendency of milk to curdle during sterilization or heat treatment so if there is some acidity in this test there will be curdling with alcohol and the another common test is clot on boiling that is if we boil the milk whether it clots so this is to determine its acceptance for condensing because this milk has to go through uh, severe heat treatment so these two tests are commonly done before receiving the milk. the next step is standardization this is done to conform to legal standards in the finished product the standardization of raw milk is normally carried out in three stages which we are going to see at the bottom the fat and snf ratio in raw milk is adjusted by adding a calculated amount of cream or skim milk to it depending on whether there is a fat shortage or fat surplus so the first step of standardization carried out to establish the desired ratio of fat and snf and usually it should be 1 is to 2.44 then the second standardization establishes the desired ratio of added sugar to the total milk solids and the third stage standardization to adjust the concentration of finished condensed milk to the desired percentage of total solids so this is briefly about the standardization the next step is preheating this refers to the heating of milk before it is condensed and serves the following purposes to ensure finished product is free from microorganisms and enzymes so some of the microorganism and enzymes will be inactivated to ensure uninterrupted boiling in the vacuum pan that is the evaporating machine and to provide effective controlling of age thickening in the product most of the time there will be a undesirable characteristics during this evaporation which is called age thickening in case of htst heating 115 to 118 degrees celsius for no hold this is serving as a pasteurization or in flash and tubular heat exchangers there also it can be done for this pasteurization so commonly HTST or flash tubular heat exchangers are used for this preheating. Now condensing this is to be done after the preheating. The basic principle is the removal of water from the standardized milk by boiling it under partial vacuum at a low temperature that is around 54 to 60 degrees Celsius and the vacuum is 63. 5 cm of mercury till the desired concentration is reached so when we keep the vacuum or low pressure the evaporation takes place very fast as you know the boiling point of water reduces with the reduction of the pressure around and when this evaporation is done at a lower temperature it will have minimum damage to the qualities or properties of the product and also the evaporation is faster so this operation is carried out in an evaporator which should preferably be of single effect type as I told earlier that is called the vacuum pan which we will see little more details at the last part. Now the next step is addition of sugar. Sugar is added for the purpose of preserving the condensed milk without subjecting to sterilization. As I said earlier in case of sweetened condensed milk sugar is added mainly for preservation amount of sugar ranges from 40 to 45 percent in the finished product which requires 18 to 20 percent sugar on milk basis a sugar ratio of approximately 65 percent sucrose ensures proper protection against microbial growth and also prevents sugar crystallization sugar is added at the end of condensing process because if it is added before it has some disadvantage which we will see next. So in continuation to addition of sugar 
the temperature and time at which sugar is added have a definite effect on the keeping quality and stability of the product the dry sugar is dissolved in the least possible quantity of water and then only it should be added to the milk the addition of sugar before condensing increase viscosity and difficulty in evaporation so if we add the sugar before condensing there is a disadvantage as i mentioned earlier and also sugar added during preheating increases the heat resistance of microorganisms and help them to survive and thereby adversely affect the keeping quality therefore the sugar should be added at the latter stage after the condensing is done now the next stage is homogenization which is to make the uniformity as you have seen in case of milk also so hot condensed milk is homogenized to obtain a uniform fat emulsion and reduce fat separation to a minimum during storage so this is done by passing through a machine where the milk is forced to pass through a very narrow aperture with high pressure and that breaks all kind of bigger particles or fat globules and that get distributed uniformly there are two kind of homogenization single stage or double stage as we have learned earlier a double stage homogenizer is used in this case the first stage is 2000 psi pressure and in the second stage 500 psi which is similar in case of milk pasteurization also so now this is the final stage that is cooling and crystallization and followed by packing at the end of evaporation the sweetened concentrate is super saturated with lactose which tends to crystallize at ambient temperature when the size of lactose crystals are more than 10 micron they can create a gritty texture and which we call sandiness and that is undesirable and also they try to settle down or create a sediment the formation of large lactose crystals is prevented by rapid cooling to 30 to 40 degree celsius so this sandiness can be avoided by rapid cooling and also by inducing crystallization under vigorous agitation after seeding with tiny lactose crystals then the product is taken for packaging either in cans or any other technique now we have learned the different steps in little bit details about the processing of condensed milk here we will see the role of milk constituents in condensed milk the first is milk fat it imparts a rich and pleasing flavor soft body and smooth texture to both condensed and evaporated milk the fat also affects the viscosity and it plays a significant role in flavor problems like rancidity or tallowiness then about the milk proteins they are physico chemical reactions to heat processing largely determine the heat stability and viscosity of condensed milk so this is about the role of milk fat and protein we are going to see the next so in continuation role of milk constituents in condensed milk about the milk sugar it plays important role in the control of texture of condensed milk size of lactose crystals determines the relative smoothness of condensed milk as we have discussed earlier the larger crystals can make sandiness which is not desirable so controlled by the procedure used for cooling and crystallization of this product so finally we can reduce the crystal size and prevent the sandiness then comes the mineral salts particularly calcium magnesium together with citrates and phosphates control the salt balance and heat stability of milk a disturbed salt balance causes objectionable heat coagulation of milk so these are about the role of different constituents in condensed milk now we will see the physico chemical properties of condensed milk the first is density so density increases because of the increase in the solid content by the evaporation process all the water goes so the solid content increases so density increases then freezing point it will be 
going downwards because lot of water has gone so the freezing point will be lower than the milk then viscosity due to the higher concentration of all solids so viscosity will be increased then color and flavor also increased because of the evaporation and concentration of solids so the color pigment like carotene will be in very high concentration so it will be more darker yellowish in color and flavor also increased due to the higher concentration of fats and other ingredients or protein and the ph also will decrease due to this processing in continuation to physico chemical properties all types of condensed milk may contain calcium chloride citric acid and sodium citrate sodium salts of orthophosphoric acid and polyphosphoric acid not exceeding 0.3% of the finished products the sweetened condensed milk and sweetened condensed skim milk may contain added added refined lactose required during the process of lactose crystallization as i have mentioned to reduce the size of lactose crystal some amount of fine crystals are used as seeding so naturally the lactose content may slightly increase now about the nutritive value so we can understand easily that nutritive value will be very high in such a concentrated milk product it will be rich in milk fat and fat soluble vitamins because the fat content increased very highly then the proteins so because of the removal of water the protein content also will be increased highly then minerals also will increase and as i said lactose content also will increase so little bit more specific about the these nutrients minerals etc we are going to see in the next table so here we can see the details composition of condensed milk or evaporated milk in case of condensed milk and condensed skim milk you can see the water content is less that is 26 and 29 whereas it is more in case of evaporated milk because there is no sugar added especially evaporated skim milk where the fat is missing then the total solid will be around 74 and 71 in case of condensed milk whereas in case of evaporated milk it is less that is 31 and 20 so that's why it need to be sterilized the water content is very high here then fat it is 9 in case of condensed milk whereas in case of condensed skim milk 0.5 evaporated milk fat again it is 9 and the evaporated skim milk is 0.5 then snf content 22 and 25 and here it is 22 and 19.5 the protein 8.3 and 9.3 and the next 8.3 and 7.2 the lactose we can see is little higher 12 and 14 in case of condensed milk skim milk and the lactose in others also 12.2 to 12 then as content 1.5 and 2.2 and the bottom 1.5 and 1.3 so total milk solid as we have told at the beginning there is a requirement as per the standard so here it is total solid 31 then 26 and again evaporated milk total solid 31 and 20 and sugar as it is added only for condensed milk this is 43 and in case of skim milk it is 40.5 here is the bis specification for condensed milk we can see the sweetened condensed milk and sweetened condensed skim milk the total milk solids minimum 31 and 26 the fat percent minimum 9 and maximum 0.5 the acidity maximum 0.35 in, in both the cases the sucrose percent 40 in both the cases and spc standard plate count per gram maximum 500 in both the cases then coliform count it should be negative in both and the yeast and mold count it should be maximum 10 per gram so this is the bi specification for condensed milk now about the use of condensed milk so mainly for sweetening and whitening agent in tea and coffee used in ice cream as we have discussed earlier in the ice cream preparation you can see it is used as a a source of fat and other milk solids used in candy chocolate and other confectionery used in pudding and prepared foods so it is a very handy 
material to be stored and used any time for many different kind of preparations. So this is about the use of evaporated milk. So in the processing we have discussed mainly about condensed milk that is with sugar but with, there is the other one is the evaporated milk where sugar is not added. So it has to go through sterilization process and then it is packed with canning. So the uses are in infant feeding, fluid milk supply, puddings, sauces and gravies, in ice cream, in chocolate, bakery and confectionery products, used in tea and coffee and in product of coffee cream etc. So these are the use of evaporated milk which is not added with sugar. So now we have learned the basic portions about the preparation and their composition, nutritive values and use. As I said very briefly we want to see some of the details about the different kind of machineries and equipment but in a very brief in some other lecture we will discuss them in a more detail. So here you can see the diagram for a vacuum evaporator. The left side if you see liquid is going to the evaporator where there is a red diagram for heating from which the water goes up and it gets condensed and there is a system for supplying the vacuum and at the bottom we can get the delivery or output of the concentrated milk. Here once again we can see the mechanism of the operation of evaporator or vacuum pan. Left side you can see the actual machine and in the right side there is a diagrammatic explanation. In this diagram at the bottom we can see the liquid feed in that is the milk and it is coming out as concentrated. There we can see in the red color the steam is going in and after doing the heat exchange it is coming out as a condensate but the water which is going out as a vapor it goes up and then the vapor goes to the condenser where it get condensed and go out as liquid. So here there is a cold wa uh, condenser water is supplied and it goes out as warm water and from the same source the vacuum for non condensables also is done. So this is very brief we will discuss sometime in more details. Here again we can see two different kind of model for evaporators. In the left side we can see it is vertical and in the right side it is horizontal. In the left side if we see the feeding is from the top and the concentrated milk is coming out from the bottom. The red columns you can see there the steam is supplied and that is the heating unit and in between this red the milk is coming and at the process it loses the water by evaporation and it get concentrated but the steam is separated from there and condensed and it, it goes out. In the right side it is in the other way. The feeding is happening here at the F and then it is going to the heating section where this red uh, tubes are having the steam and there is a heat exchange and the concentrate is coming down whereas the vapor is going up and there it get condensed. Here we can see the continuous evaporation uh, diagram in the right side I have already explained this one as the vacuum pan how it works whereas the left side there is a flow of operation you can see one to eight numbers so the blue line is showing the flow of milk there is a milk tank then pump then it goes to the preheating section in number three and then there is number uh, temperature adjustment and number four so it get preheated and then it is going to the actual evaporator or vacuum pan that is in number 6 and then from there it goes to the number 7 that is a pump and then it goes there is a vacuum pump which is providing continuous vacuum but from the 7 it is already concentrated and is go out as a product that is evaporated milk. This is the diagram two different diagram for a new modern technique for evaporation that is called falling film evaporator. So here you can see in the left side diagram there is a live steam injection inside and from the top a film of uh, input of milk is given and after expo getting exposed with the steam the vapor comes out and it is taken out as a condensate and the concentrated milk is coming downwards. Similarly in the right side diagram also you can see that red there is a heating steam and in the top left side green there is the feeding of milk 
and after getting exposed to the steam it is getting evaporated and the vapors are taken out as a condensate and the condensed milk or concentrated milk is coming down and which is taken out with a pump so this is briefly about the falling film evaporator so this is a modern continuous system for evaporation that is multiple effect evaporator as i mentioned earlier there can be single stage or second stage or third stage several stages of evaporation takes place continuously you can see there is preheating arrangement condenser arrangement vapor separator feeding in and feeding out so we will not go much details about it now so here you can see another uh, technique for evaporation as i mentioned earlier that is the plate type so earlier we have seen the plate heat exchanger which is used for htst pasteurization so similar techniques is used here for evaporation purpose only thing the heating medium should be of very high temperature with steam otherwise the principle is same the milk flows in one side and the heating medium in other side there will be fast evaporation of this uh, through this heat exchange so that's briefly about the plate heat uh, type of evaporator so now we are at the end of today's lecture we have discussed about what is the condensed milk what are the different types what are their composition what are different kind of standards and what is the principle of evaporation what is the details of procedure for condensed milk or evaporated milk and their packaging and their composition nutrients utilization and at the end briefly i have shown different kind of evaporators and their principles of operations so thank you thank you for listening you can learn more details from the notes i will be giving later